Yeah, of course. Yeah, you're fine. And here we are with the one and only Mr. Jamie Campbell Bauer. So great meeting you again. Nice to see you. It's wonderful city, Cologne. And um, I think you would be here before for doing some music. That's right. Is it Cologne? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't for the life of me remember what the venue was called. I was thinking about this earlier. But uh, yeah, it's lovely to be back. So how was it for you being here? Because this is a city where I also live. Did you have the chance to see some, some something from the countryside here? Maybe maybe the cathedral or anything else? I've, I've seen the cathedral before. This time on this trip, I haven't seen much. I, I got in yesterday, so uh, I've seen the inside of a hotel room. And then this beautiful cinema, uh, which is gorgeous and stunning and, and is, is very much needed in today's world. And did you have maybe um, had the chance by the, for the last time maybe eat some good German food or taste anything else that you maybe enjoy? We, we, so whenever, I was explaining this to somebody the other day, um, whenever we would come to Germany, whenever I've played shows in Germany, you always know that you're going to get fed well. You always know that you're going to have a nice shower and that you're going to have the opportunity to wash your clothes. And it's something that I think Germany should be very proud of is the fact that for music and for the arts here, there seems to be a real funding to those to, to, to the artistic community, which is beautiful. So um, I've eaten lots of German food in my time whilst I've been here. Lots of sauerkraut. Mm. <laughs> and this convention is so much special because it's a smaller one mm. and it's in a cinema. I don't think it's your ever done a convention in a, in a cinema. No, never. This is the first time I've ever done a convention in a cinema. It's beautiful. I think it's um, it feels as like it's a celebration of, of the show. It feels like it's a celebration of community. Um, and, and I think that's really, really important. Um, yeah, I'm really grateful to be here. And how is it for you meeting all your fans? Because I think there are so many people around the world, millions, millions of people, and uh, they are just meeting, want to meet you, uh, want to celebrate your role. So how is this get together with the fan base? It's always overwhelming at times, I think. Um, I think spending time with somebody who wants to say congratulations and that they enjoy your work is always quite a strange experience because I make my work in isolation. I don't consider the possibility of anybody really enjoying it. I just have to enjoy it in that moment. Um, so it's quite a it, it's it the, there's a there's a there's a strangeness to it um, because fundamentally I believe that and I know that we all have a magic that we all have a power right um, and so we should all be celebrating each other individually so to be sat there with somebody who's like oh I love your work it's like oh no <laughs> it feels it's 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 it's, it's an, it, obviously it's incredible and I'm in, I'm I'm wildly grateful for it um, and in the same breath there is a there is a strangeness to it um, so I always want to make sure that I'm creating a level of human interaction with anybody that I'm meeting it's 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 important to me yeah and that's very good because you're so kind so polite since the first time we met in Mexico so years ago it was 2010 I remember so um, always it was always great meeting you because you're taking so much time. You're very, 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 very um, friendly to everybody and heartwarming. This is this is very great because I would love and that that other actors do the same, but most of them they didn't. So how much does it mean to you meeting people and being um, this very, very nice and friendly guy? <laughs> I have my moments of being unfriendly, don't you? Don't you worry. Uh, <laughs> I can stand up for myself. I think. Um, I, I I think that it's interesting, uh, given the time that we're talking about this, and Killian Murphy has been very vocal about this recently, which is that what he sees his job as is a study of of human beings, right? Um, and I feel very much the same way. So, meeting people. It's always wildly fascinating to me because we're all so beautiful and all so different in, in many different ways. Um, so it means a lot to me to meet people. I mean, I think there's also the side of me that is very understanding and recognizes that without people coming and supporting the shows that we make and the art that we create, there is no art without the person who is supporting it. So in that sense, there is a, there is a, there's a real level of kind of um, respect that I have 
for, for people who, who watch the things that we make. Um, without those people going to the cinema, without those people logging into Netflix, listening to music, we can't do anything. There's, there's, there is no art. So it's, it's, it's shared. There's a shared level of respect there. It has to be. And I admire your work and Stranger Things so much because I know how hard it was shooting all this and how amazing you look as Wegner because this, this character is so iconic. I, I would say it's one of the 10 best television villains we've seen in the last 20 years. It's my opinion because it's amazing. It's, it's, it's mind-blowing. So um, how was it for you playing this guy and how is it um, to uh, be in that costume and playing that? Because I can understand when you have all these layers of latex on and you must act because I, I can't see your 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 your, your um, uh, face muscles, but it works. In any way, it works because just if you stand there and look, it's stunning. Mm. So how how difficult is that? Because when you're wearing this mask to act, that it's a lot harder than than I think I'd I'd, I'd ever considered it would be. Um, there's there's many different facets to it. I mean, one is you know I'm I'm a big believer in energy and all of this kind of stuff. And so, you know, you have an extra inch, half an inch of skin almost on top of you. Um, so you, I had to make sure and anyone wearing that kind of suit has to make sure that the energy level that's normally protruding from your skin has to then penetrate another level of skin almost. Um, that plus the fact that the sets were so big. I remember walking onto the set and thinking, this is huge. I've got to be able to own this space without fear, without doubt. Like I've just got to go in there and give it. Um, so that was another thing that I had to be, you know, thinking about. Also, the late the mask itself, the facial mask itself, it, there, there is movement in it. Um, and it's not as much as obviously your face, you know, being able to move all the time. But so you have to do more, you have to really if you're in it, you have to be really in it, you know, and really, really giving it. Um, so that was wild. <laughs> and then the voice too, I mean, it was, it was, it was, there was a lot of preparation that went into it. And I've said this before, and I remember doing the read through um, before we started shooting and I'd really kind of gotten to grips with Henry and how I was going to do that. And I'd really understood where all the sort of psyche was coming from with that. And then with Vecner, I was like still kind of figuring it out. And I'd gone through this big change in my life where I was like, I'm going to let go of things that are weighing me down of, of, of you know, I'm going to pass resentment by, I'm going to just sort of move through all these things. Ultimately with Vecner, all that's left is resentment. So like I had to kind of re readjust and, and, and bring that back up with myself. And at the read through, I hadn't got it like the voice wasn't there and I remember doing the voice and there was just this sort of like flat silence and I was like oh no I've really fucked this up I need to, I need to go back and and relook at this and you know I, I did and, and I went back you know really into the reference work that, that that sort of Matt and Ross had had kind of gently steered me towards and that was in the script and and and, and just kind of spent a lot of time in that um, and again you know with with regards to kind of thank you for your kind words but with regards to like what people consider the character to have become again I wasn't focused on it I think it's that thing of just like I just want to do the best thing that I can do to service this show and service something that fundamentally means so much to me um, and I remember going to see Matt and Ross right at the beginning before they'd even cast me and I'd made this whole mood boards at home over like the space of like three days. So I'd stuck a picture of Will Byers in the middle. I've still got it. Stuck a picture of Will Byers in the middle and then the mind flare upside down, Will Byers missing kind of some of the other cast. And then around the outside, I had other sort of horror icons, um, you know, Christopher Lee, um, Gary Oldman, um, who else was in there? Doug Bradley was in there. Uh, Ray Fiennes was in there, you know, just all these great kind of horror characters that I could draw from. And this is before they'd handed me the script and I'd just kind of been given some sides and we had the meeting and I didn't say anything, I said nothing. And at the end I was like, 
I had my little folder and I was like, can I show you something? And they're like, yeah, yeah, sure. And I was like, well, this is kind of what I'm thinking and this is kind of what I've been picking up from in the universe, whatever's out there. And they were like, have you read the script? Said, no, 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 they were like, this is literally perfect. So it was one of those things that I would just describe as like a perfect storm, you know, of just kind of being receptive to whatever was out there and, and then acting upon it. And I think that that's, for me, what this job is really about is it's about letting things that are uncomfortable be uncomfortable for a short period of time not knowing the answers to things and then slowly but surely the answers start to reveal themselves and the universe provides and it's up to you whether or not you want to listen you know <laughs> it's like you know are you receptive enough um so um yeah again you know just really just focusing on the job and and, and focusing on the icons that I really love and that I know the boys really love and, and using as much of that as possible to create something new. What I find very interesting and this I was told by many German female actresses because I asked how is it for you watching yourself on stream, are you proud, are you just critical and many German actresses told me they can't see herself on screen, they don't watch their own movies. Mm. How is it for you when you watch yourself on screen, maybe in your role as number one or in your role as Lechner? Um, how is it for you when you see yourself? Um, are you critical? I would say, oh, this is, um, I, I have done, could done more. Uh, is it maybe that you are just proud? So what, what kind of emotional feeling is it when you, when you see yourself in this giant show? Um, I really, really don't like watching myself with other people. I don't like being in the same room, so much so that at the premiere of the show in New York, I, I left, I, I, I left the screening. I left my partner and my agents and my, my people I work with were just all like, where are you going? I was like, I, I can't be in here to watch this. I'm terrified. Um, when I'm working on the job itself, there are times that I will go to the monitor and check playback, you know, just to kind of make sure that everything that I think or everything that I've kind of been thinking about is in that particular take. Um, there are some times as well in, in the same breath where I know that I've done it and I'm like, that's, that's good. I don't need to see that back. I feel really positive about that. I trust you. I gave it everything I could, but I never leave work thinking, oh, I wish I'd done more. I wish I'd get, I wish I'd just done a little bit more. My thing for me is give it give as much as you can give in that moment. Um, don't hold back. What's the point you've got today and that's it, right? Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't like watching myself with other people for this show. And, and I think as I've gotten older, what I really love about characters and the job I do is the idea of a development throughout a story or why people are the way that they are. Do we get to see why they've become the way that they are and if we do okay well what were they like before then so then what happens to them and so I remember being on set for Stranger Things and one of our assistant directors who I worked with on Twilight we would tr we was matching a shot with second unit and um, it was the opening scene for, for, for Henry where he goes and meets Eleven for the first well we, we see them interacting for the first time and and I hadn't seen it and I'd been I was terrified to shoot it and I you know gave it as much as I could do on the day. And she was like, Oh well you need to watch it because we need to match it. And I was like, Oh God, okay, all right, show it to me. And we watched it and I was like, It works. It works and that I'm happy with. If it works, then I'm good. If it's servicing the story, then I'm really, really happy with that. It's not about me ultimately, it's about is this doing what it's meant to do for the story? Um, so not really pride so much. I try not to be too critical. I'm critical of myself on the day. I'll be critical in the, in the moment, same way I write music. I'll write something, I'll listen to it. If it's bad, it's bad. All right, let's keep going. Let's make it better. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, after it's done, it's done. It's no longer mine. It belongs to, belongs to the world. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> And my last question, um, how much does it mean to you making music? Because I think this is also a part of your life, so how much does it mean to you and uh, will be hopefully there a new tour, maybe for Germany, in the next month? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it means 
art in general means everything to me. It's the way I interact with the world. It's the way I express my opinion, um, my emotion, um, and through whatever means possible, doing that, I will do that. I've been fortunate enough that by some unbeknownst reason, this has been able to be a career for me and I'm able to live and survive. And that's thanks to people that support the work that we do. Um, but yeah, music also, like performance, means everything to me. It means everything. And I think as I've gotten older, I've understood the importance of intention in choosing work. Um, if you choose the things that fulfill you and that when you read them you love, you're going you're gonna to experience something new about yourself and you're going to find something new out about life. Um, and I'm very conscious of that with every choice I make now, you know, it's, it's, it's vital. And with regards to a tour, I got a bit of, I got a bit of filming to do yet. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Amazing. Thank you. Thanks so much.